Warning, the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. Proceed at your own risk. Pokeweed, also known as Phytolacca americana. This member of the pokeweed family is a perennial, meaning its lifespan is longer than two years, and it grows in a habitat of moist soil. The plant will grow from four to 10 feet tall, and it has whiter pinkish flowers that are in bloom from June to October. The flowers have five regular parts, is a quarter of an inch wide, with sepals that are round and petal-like. The flowers grow in racemes that'll produce dark purple fruit. The plant has alternate leaves, and the leaves are entire. The stem is stout, succulent, and branching. Caution should be exercised when handling this plant. All parts of this plant are poisonous. The plant juice can cause dermatitis and damage chromosomes. When harvesting, do not include any part of the root and discard shoots tinged with red. As for the plant's edibility, the young shoots could be harvested in springtime, up to six inches tall, or just the leafy tips, and then boiled for 20 to 30 minutes in two changes of water but have both pots of water boiling at the same time and do not use cold water. The peeled shoots can be boiled for 15 minutes in several changes of water and eaten like asparagus or pickled in hot vinegar. The fruit can be harvested in summertime. The berries have been used as a food source by both American Indians and Europeans, but it is noted that the seeds are poisonous, so avoid or use with extreme caution. The berries were used to dye frosting, wine, add color to preserves, and they were used to make pies and tarts. Medicinally, the Cherokee used the roots and berries for rheumatism, a poultice was used for severe fevers, ulcers, and swellings. The roots were dried, crushed, and sprinkled on old sores. A root tea was used for blood and eczema, and a cold tea was made from the powder roots and used for kidney problems. A berry wine was used to relieve rheumatism, and a berry tea was used for arthritis. The Delaware roasted and crushed the roots and then mixed it with sarsaparilla and mountain grape bark for rheumatism as a blood medicine and stimulant. The roots were also roasted and made into a salve then applied to chronic sores and glandular swellings. The Delaware from Oklahoma made a strong infusion of the roots or twigs and used it for herbal steam for rheumatism. Internally, a compound containing the roots was ingested. The Iroquois boiled the roots and applied it as a poultice to sprains and bruises. The undried roots was mixed with beeswax and deer tallow to make a salve and then applied to bunions. For swollen joints, a poultice was made of the roots and applied to the swollen area. The berries were rubbed on skin lumps and the stem was boiled and taken by a spoonful for chest colds. The Mahuna considered the plant poisonous. The roots were used for severe neurologic pains. The leaves were used for skin diseases and to remove pimples and blackheads. The Micmac used the leaves for bleeding wounds. The Mohegan considered the roots poisonous, but a poultice of the mashed berries was applied to sore breasts. The Rappahannock made an infusion of the berries and took it for dysentery. A fermented infusion of the leaves was taken for rheumatism. A compound infusion with the roots was applied to ivy poison, and a poultice of the mashed roots was applied to warts until it bleeds. For hemorrhoid remedy, the steam from a decoction of the roots was used for hemorrhoids. And finally, the Seminole Indians ate the berries as an analgestic or pain reliever and used it for rheumatism. According to Western Herbal Medicine, the medicinal parts are the root, leaves, and berries. Its actions are emetic, cathartic, narcotic, and alternative. It was used for scrofulous, syphilitic, and rheumatic conditions. It was used both internally and externally for skin conditions such as itch, boils, carbuncles, abscesses, eczema, syphilitic eruptions, psoriasis, and ulcers. It was highly esteemed for diseases of the throat and mouth such as laryngitis, influenza, catarrh, and tonsillitis. As for the plant's other uses, the berries were used to make dyes, inks, and necklaces. Well guys, that's it for another video. I hope you found this information to be useful. And if you have, please like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave it in the comments below. I love hearing what you guys have to say. And as always, keep your eyes and ears open and your powder dry. <laughs>